Restoring Illinois to greatness. This is Illinois Rising, presented by the Illinois Policy Institute and hosted by AM560's Dan Proft. Dan Prof back with Hillary Gowans, managing editor of Illinois Policy Institute, IllinoisPolicy.org. And Hillary, uh, Governor Rahner um, got a little animated this week. I, frankly, I like to see it. I like to see him kind of get, get off script and just talk like the guy that was the candidate that people decided uh, needed to be the governor uh, and, uh, and really kind of get after the legislative leaders in Springfield. I mean, you can only offer so many olive branches before you need to turn those you need to take those branches and whip some people with them and that's what he started to do this week when he addressed the issue of higher ed funding and what Cullerton and Madigan are are doing uh, with a bipartisan bill that is on the table to fund higher education here's Governor Rahner we've got a dictatorship of one individual who cares about politics over people and he's talking about House Speaker Mike Madigan, of course. Uh, Governor Rahner uh, went on on topic. We have a bipartisan bill to fund our universities with $160 million right now. Speaker Madigan is managing this process for political games, political gain in the primary election, not to help our students. And so the question is, this uh, war of words between Governor Rahner and Mike Madigan, this war of wills, too, on matters like higher ed funding, how do you think this plays out for the governor? Um, Well, I think that Rahner is telling the truth, obviously. Madigan and Cullerton have been um, in Illinois politics for more than 80 years. So, you know, that just tells you how entrenched they are in the status quo. Um, but many in the media continue to shield Madigan, and I don't know that this strategy is necessarily working out for Rauner right now. Yeah, and uh, he went on. He had a, a apparently kind of a private conversation with Cullerton that he decided to make public in a very entertaining way. It's a rather incredible statement that he relayed Cullerton made to him. And you know what, what the President Cullerton said to me in private? He said, Bruce... I've lived in Mike's shadow for 37 years. I'm not going to step out now. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? You wonder why Illinois is in such deep yogurt, ladies and gentlemen? No, I don't wonder. I don't wonder at all. It's a, it's a real profile and courage down there with Senate President John Cullerton, who's lords over a supermajority of Democrats and uh, is very comfortable in Mike Madigan's shadow. Yeah. Um, here's the problem, though. I think people like us, Dan, and, and a lot of our listeners are are very involved in Illinois politics. They they read about Madigan and his antics, but there are tons of other people in Illinois who just, you know, they don't know the nuances. I think um, Roniger is, is really missing a, an opportunity to change the conversation, to pull a Don Draper. And instead of focusing oh, on, Mad Men you know, the men behind the curtain, who are Madigan and Cullerton, I think he needs to start talking about the things that we were talking about at the top of the show, which include, you know, the the breakdown in higher education funding, for example. Um, he would be, you know, really smart to do that, I think. And he has a, gr- a great opportunity. But right now we're talking about two men who most people in Illinois don't really know exist. I mean, in terms of, so you're suggesting he needs to do more explaining. Mm-hmm. That this is, you know, forget the competing bills, forget Madigan's a dictator of one. Um, although I think more and more people are becoming aware of Mike Madigan. And, and it is difficult, especially for the left, to defend the idea of the guy who's been here for 12 months is the problem, not the guy who's been, uh, guys who's been in charge for three decades, uh, especially after they spent the last eight years saying everything that's happened during the Obama administration is George Bush's fault. Um, so it's, it puts him in a little bit of a trick bag, the left. But to your point, uh, when you talk about higher ed or you talk about the Chicago public schools or any other budget matter, system change is a nice phrase, but you've got to drill it down so you can bring people along with you. Right. And I'm not saying that he should avoid exposing Madigan and Cullerton for what they really are. And they're people who are out for themselves and out to protect the elite members of their inside circle. Um, But he has to balance that with things that people understand. He has to speak to the people. And to do that, he needs to talk about things like higher education in terms of look at how much tuition has cost us and and it's doubled in the last decade for Illinois public universities. Um, why is that? Talk about bloated administrative roles. Talk about pensions that take up more than half of the higher ed funding. 
you know, he has to break it down for people. Yeah, I think I think actually that's a, an excellent point, and I think it's underappreciated, particularly by Republicans. They just want to play this Democrat game. Rather, I think people viscerally know what's happening, but they don't know the details, and they want the details. They want to understand it. You got a kid going to college, you want to understand it. Why am I paying more to send my kid to U of I than my friends in Indiana are saying are paying to send their kids to IU or to University of Iowa or any other? I mean, people do want to be brought along and understand. It. So they and, and if you do that, then you turn people into proselytizers for your message and it can start to have a multiplier effect where you can, as you said, change the conversation and start to change some outcomes. Right. This hits people at home. This hits families where it hurts. He, he Rauner's done a good job talking about things like property taxes, which everybody who owns a home in Illinois feels. Um, we've talked to at the Illinois Policy Institute, a woman in Crystal Lake who is paying eleven hundred dollars for her mortgage and fifteen hundred dollars a month for her property tax. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So telling people numbers like that, it shocks them.